Vinod Sa is my name. I am professional by spiritual healer. I am doing aura photography and psychic surgery, surgery without cut. This is a, exactly the spiritual science, we, we can say. Medical science is a science of medicine, and the spiritual science is a science of human body. It is a body, mind, and soul, what we say as a rule, or a soul. It is a science of a God power. Once the person develops the spiritual power by sadhana, or whatever the prayer, spiritual prayer, or whatever the namaz, and whatever we are doing, and if you develop the spiritual ability to heal others, this is the difference between an ordinary human being and a superhuman being, what we say. And the science of this energy, invisible energy. Now there is a two type of things which exist in human being. One is visible physical body, and another is a soul body, ruhu. So now science of the ruhu, soul body, is 99%, and science of the body is 1%. Today what we are practicing is the medical science, is the science of medicine and not the science of human body. And purpose of any religion is to keep human body healthy throughout the life and achieve the final goal of the life. So understand this science sir, of sir, invisible sir, power, sir, God power. Sir, can we have your question without a background? So that just you can have your background in two, three yeah. sentences, then your question, please, if, sir. If we follow the path of religion, any religion or Quran, we can keep ourselves healthy throughout the life if we don't get any disease in the body. Brother asked the question that he is a spiritual healer and he heals things without cut, without using a knife and treats patients, etc. Talking about spirituality, healing of the body, healing of the soul. Basically, brother, as far as spiritual healing is concerned, there is something like true spiritual healing and something which is like a deceit. There's a world of a difference in that. We do have many spiritual healing in public done by missionaries. And I've attended some of the programs, Christian missionaries. They get a person and they get him on the stage and the person is lame and he starts walking. The person is blind, he starts seeing. And we find many. And I don't know whether you have seen, I've seen many documentaries which have tried to expose how they do it. How they do it. And in our Islamic Research Foundation, ours is a research organization on Islam and comparative religion. And we try and collect materials dealing with such things. There are many documentaries which show that how they do it. How they make a fool of the public. For example, they show a person that there's a person lame sitting in the audience. So the healer goes and picks up the stick. In the name of Jesus, start running, and the person starts running. But the person who starts running is the person who's sitting on the right. The person who was lame was sitting on the left. So what we realize that all these are pre-planned. Either the pre-planned, what I tell them, that really if you're a spiritual healer, you come to the hospital, you know, I'm a medical doctor. I tell them, come to my hospital, direct, ready-made. If you treat, the full family will convert. So if you are a spiritual healer, and if really it's the truth, we require hundreds of people like you. We don't want to have all these government hospitals, you know, Nair Hospital, Sign Hospital, KM Hospital, we'll employ you. So what we have to realize, that is it the truth or not? Yes, there are something like spiritual, like, for example, the Quran says that the verses of the Quran can be used for healing. But what if you realize in Islam, the person to heal is Huwa Shafi. It is he who heals. If anyone says, I heal, it is nonsense. It is Almighty God who heals, whether through a doctor, but doing this surgery without knife. Fine, there is laser technology, but surely you aren't using laser technology. Are you using laser technology? No. Say, I I, using, uh, so what I'm trying to say, that the spiritual thing you're talking about, yes. I being a medical doctor, coming from medical background, if it was true, we would have learned in medical first year that there is this method, so we would prefer having more of such people than spending five and a half years there. So what I'm trying to say, 
that most of these things what people talk about spiritual healing, it is more of a big fast. It is time to make fast buck, fast money. But, 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 but there's Almighty God, mashallah. There are verses of the Quran which can get peace for you in your mind, which can treat you. There are certain diseases which science cannot understand beyond science understanding. There may be, but what we see today, mostly in the spiritual healing sessions, in vast gathering, according to me, it is nothing but a gimmick. And all these people who heal, I would like to invite you, brother. Let's tomorrow go to Sign Hospital together, fine. And you heal the people, better have you than have 50 doctors. Healing, generally what we say is a healing. Healing is not for the curing the disease, what occur in the body. But if you treat your mind and soul body, you will never get the disease throughout the life. So preventive care, what we do day to day prayer and namaz and whatever we do it properly, we will never get a health problem. And if you understand the science behind it, it is a science of God power and how to use God power in our day to day life. What is relation of God power with human body? So if you understand that science totally, which is 99% of human health, medical science has not understood the mind and soul science because it's a Western science. It is a science of body only. And it is a one person of total knowledge. 99% knowledge is just mind and soul knowledge, which is a secret knowledge lost from India. And today, what I'm as a science student, I give up my religion, Jainism, to going to temple and other things for 20 years after learning this science. And when I came to know in 92 about the spiritual healing, about Reiki and pranic healing, which has came from the foreign, these foreign people are teaching our own science in India the science which was there in 5,000 years in India, Vedic science, Jainism, Muslim, whatever, that is lost because Western science has taken over the charge of our human body and human health. And this science was discovered to kill virus and bacteria only. I want it to is the a question, it brother. Is a chemical poison. Brother, this is a question answer time, not a speech time. So we have got your question. You are saying that if you know this spiritual healing, you will never get the disease of the body. I disagree with you. Yes. If you do practice, there may be on certain occasions where there are less chances that you may acquire diseases. But if you say that you will never get diseases, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. What you have to realize that I do know that there are certain, for example, you spoke about namaz. I can give a talk on the scientific benefits of salah. I can give a talk of one hour on the scientific benefits of salah. For example, the best part of salah is the sujood. Now, when you do sujood, you put the highest part of your body, the foot, on the lowest part of the ground. And when we do that, what we find that there is more supply of the blood going to the brain. That makes a healthy brain. There are less chances of having chill veins. That is the disease of the skin of the face. When you are doing sujood, there is drainage of the bronchial tree. So less chances of having bronchiectasis. Now, when we breathe normally, when we breathe normally, one third of the air in the lung remains. It's called as residual air. When you breathe in the sujood, the abdominal viscera, they press against the diaphragm. And the diaphragm, it exhales out the residual air. So you breathe in more fresh air. So because you breathe in more fresh air, there's less residual air, the chances your lung will be healthy is far superior. Less chances of having lung diseases. Furthermore, there's more increased venous return of the abdominal viscera. There's less chances of having piles. When you get up, from the position of sijda, when you stand up, there is more stress on the calf muscles. And the calf muscles, according to medical science, they are known as peripheral heart. It pumps the blood to the lower part of the body. I can go on and on giving references. How does Salah benefit? But, but, we Muslims, we don't pray Salah for all these benefits. We pray because we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These medical benefits are side dishes, desert. Our main dish, biryani, is because we thank Allah and we worship Him. These medical benefits may inspire a non-Muslim. He may come closer to Islam, it will keep you healthy, but mainly it is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we worship Him. It is not because we want to do exercise. These are extra benefits, side dishes. But even I've read about other religious about Vedic and all, 
Some, I do agree, do have some benefits. But to say that if you do this, you will never get any disease, I disagree with it. And it has not been proven by science at all. And as for the non-Muslims, if they would like to ask any questions, even outside the topic, if he or she is a non-Muslim, you're most welcome to ask questions even outside the topic.